Have you ever found a series that you knew you probably shouldn't like, but you still did? Like, you knew that it wasn't all that great, but you still couldn't manage to pull yourself away from it. And then because you can't pull yourself away from it, it becomes your guilty pleasure. Well, that's me with the 100 girlfriends who really, 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 really love you. Maru realized that no explanation would ever be enough to save him from this humiliation. The misunderstanding was as deep and dark as the gaping pit of despair that swallowed his soul. Logically speaking, I know that this manga should be the bane of my existence. It is a dumb harem manga that exemplifies my biggest beef with anime at large. The fact that everyone gets bitches but me. I mean, poorly disguised excuses to bombard a male character with personalities. It's by no means the kind of excellent storytelling you would get from the top of the genre stuff like Love is War, but for some reason I still can't manage to break away from this series. On a more serious note, I picked this one up because I saw the title and the first thought that went through my head is, there is no way that this is any good, and I just had to find out. Well, hot diggity dog, this series caught me by surprise. For what it's worth, 100 Girlfriends fully embraces the absurdity of its own premise and throws any attempt at serious storytelling out the window. And that is the only reason this series has any amount of entertainment value. If it, even in the slightest, tried to be a serious story, the whole thing would fall apart. But the fact of the matter is, is that it is a rom-com that survives entirely on how unhinged and nonsensical its plot lines are. We're talking solving climate change with hairballs, parodies of your name, which by the way is one of the best anime movies ever made, yes I am a Makoto Shinkai simp, and even a touch of MILF hunting. From tsundere's to mega mommy milkers, this series has it all. If by all you mean waifus. So I guess that begs the question, what exactly is this series about? Well, Ijo Rentero is a man with a bottomless well of love in his heart. It's just a shame he has no one to share it with. This man has spent his entire life confessing his love to women, only to get rejected each and every time. Becoming a man of a hundred rejections by the time he enters high school, Rentero decides on the very first day of school he's going to go to a shrine and ask God for an extraordinary love life. Be very careful what you wish for though, because on that day, Rentero meets God. As fate would have it, Rentero's disastrously bad luck with romance is all due to a mistake God made when creating the guy. Instead of assigning a single soulmate to Rentero, God accidentally adds two zeros to that number. But don't ask why that happens. Apparently it's because God was watching Castle on the Sky. However it came to be, God explains that all of Rentero's romantic luck was used up on his high school life because of this one mistake, meaning that he was doomed to get rejected an infinite number of times until high school. <laughs> All right, I need a break because I'm reading back on my script and this shit is just wild. The last thing God tells Rentaro at this time is that he'll know who his soulmate is when they lock eyes. He'll get a special feeling or whatever. Yeah, that's going to start happening a lot in this manga. With this insanity in mind, Rentaro heads off to school for the first day only to meet the first two soulmates day one, which becomes a bit of a problem because they both confess their love to him at the same time. So now Rentero is confused because he doesn't know which one to choose, so he goes back to God to see if there's a solution, only to find out that if someone is rejected by their soulmate, they're pretty much doomed to a life of misery or an early death. So Rentero, unable to let one of them be miserable or die, decides he's going to date both of them, and yeah, you can pretty much see where this series is going. I can say pretty much because you know there's 98 other waifus out there who are going to show up at any given moment, but how could you predict that one of them was going to turn into a hair monster that goes and flies off into the sun? Seriously, that's a plot line. For what it's worth, this series knows exactly what target audience it wants and how to get them, with waifus, and lots of them. Seriously, you've got pervy waifu, tsundere waifu, mute waifu, science waifu, hungry waifu, masochistic waifu, milf waifu, arrogant waifu, submissive waifu, shy waifu, murka waifu. Okay, enough. You, you, if you have a type, it's probably going to be in this series. And again, the series doesn't just limit itself to something that's somewhat realistic. 
Each character's personality is so outlandish and quirky, you wouldn't believe that they're a real person. And as far as using the characters for the gags, their personalities are generally pretty well used in the series. I can't really say story in this instance because there really isn't one. For real though, it is daily waifu shenanigans with this series. That's pretty much all it is. And what you would expect the guy with this many ladies ready to throw themselves at him to start acting like a scumbag. The main character, Rentaro, acts like a gentleman and is probably the l most self-controlled person there. I mean, the guy is hardly the worst boyfriend I've ever seen, which is not saying much because Rent-A-Girlfriend is out there. Look, if I were to judge this series solely based on its narrative structure, I would say that it's written for balding 20-something year old men with no bitches who have never touched a woman in their life and are too afraid to actually go out there and talk to a woman for fear of being rejected. Huh. But the fact of the matter is that this is a series that only works once it stops taking itself seriously, which it never did to begin with. Freeing itself from the shackles of reason and logic and embracing the insanity that happens when you have a writer with too much time and too many shrooms. The fact that, much like with the manga D-Frag, this series just abandons realism altogether and goes for whatever kind of storytelling it wants makes it a whole lot more entertaining than I originally expected it was going to be. Like I said closer to the beginning of the video, I went into this series expecting just some shitty harem manga, but instead I got the unhinged tale of a man trying to date a hundred different women at the same time and all of the insane shenanigans that follow. From a literal harebrained apocalypse, to an eating contest against a giant robot, to a parody of one of my favorite anime movies, this series is not afraid to just go there and I downright respect it. I find myself continuing to read because you never quite know where this thing is going. It has that clever little bit of creativity to it that turns the smallest or even the dumbest things into overblown scenarios that are well out of proportion. The series ends up being one of the more entertaining mangas I've actually picked up. Hell, it even goes so far as to make fun of itself inside its own chapters even referring to previous events as the previous chapters, and making fun of the fact that the world has no rhyme or reason. And the fact that it has no self-respect and is so outrageous keeps it from being just another bottom-of-the-barrel kind of manga and makes it somewhat good. If you're not looking for kawaii girls and shenanigans, well, these aren't the waifus you're looking for, because this series is catering to people who are looking for those two things specifically. Like I said, it's written for balding 20-somethings who should probably stop calling themselves out on the internet. I need help. This isn't a series that consists of complex, deep storytelling that will move you. It's cheap, dirty entertainment. It's fun to read and entertaining for its stupidity, but it lacks depth or any sort of compelling story. In essence, it's dumb fun and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Some dumb fun every now and again can be healthy because it gives you a chance to just turn your brain off and relax. And with this bullshittery getting an anime adaptation, I expect to see this thing balloon up for a bit here in the future, though I have my doubts how long that a popularity is actually going to last. To the contrary of that, though, the My Anime List ranking does seem to be pretty decent. Seriously, the series lacks any sort of staying power, and I see it getting memory hold after the novelty of its absurdity wears off. And my one complaint is that right around chapter 51, things start to get a little weird, because... Yeah, there's the whole cousin thing. What the hell, Japan? Incest is wincest, I guess. Sweet home, I give this series a 7 out of 10. Just for the fact that it is actually fun to read for how ridiculous and over the top everything can be. And I find that absolutely hilarious. Sometimes you just need to hunker down with 100 waifus and enjoy the bullshit. Would I recommend this one? I'm not sure, I'm still kind of on the fence, because it's one that's here solely to give you that surface level of enjoyment with no impact. Those looking for something more tasteful will definitely turn their noses up at it, but if you're just looking for something dumb to kill the time, this is perfect. But I think that's about all out of me. Thanks for watching, I really appreciate it. And I would also appreciate it if you would consider liking and subscribing, because the support is the only substitute I can find for the warm embrace of a woman. Anyway. Thanks for your time. Cheers. What can I say?